All right, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Scout our community schools and its partnership with the parents, students, and the community is committed to educate our students to become skilled, knowledgeable, and responsible citizens in a global society. Notice that this meeting was given in advance according to state law by giving notice of the meeting to the public. Notice of the meeting was also given in advance to all members of the Board of Education. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right. Uh, this meeting has been preceded by advance notice and is hereby declared to be an open session. A copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in front of the meeting room. I will entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. I'll second the motion. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Anything that... We're on budget. A little bit ahead. Just we have more COVID days out. Um, while we had to give 10 COVID days, there's no revenue or no support. <coughs> so we're about 1% ahead, but um, not something we can't try to see if we can recover from. Revenue is a little bit slower for me, but you know, that's. Sally, go ahead and call the roll. Robert? Yes. Lanuza? Yes. Nishet? Yes. Simran? Yes. Robert? Yes. All right, uh, public forum. I don't know if we have any guests that have any comments to share with the community. If so, we will be limiting them to five minutes in length. No takers. Okay. Uh, move on. Student rep report. Yeah, you come up here. Yeah. Um, well, you can sit if you want. Yeah, don't sit too close to Chuck, though. He might bite. <laughs> 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 Uh, to start off, on December 7th, uh, the FFA chapter had a leadership development had leadership de development events uh, via Zoom. Uh, three students participated in that. One of the districts at Gretna on Saturday, December 5th, they received many outstanding actor awards, but we did not qualify for state. Uh, the community performance is this Thursday on the news stage at six and on Friday we're performing one for uh, ninth and 10th graders and then one for 11th and 12th graders. Uh, the band and choir had their performance yesterday in the new auditorium. Uh, it was, it's pretty nice in there. Uh, finals are being held Wednesday and Thursday, the 16th and 17th. Culture Club had their blood drive uh, last Wednesday, December 9th. Uh, student Council decorated the new commons area with a tree, and I have some pictures for that. Yes. Um, they, the seniors were discussing that they wanted their banners in the new gym. They said they were thinking about getting them visualized, like putting them on the on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, students took map sets during focus classes. Uh, the past, the tests were taken in core classes. And so they time to, like, they could take their time to finish. Um, I feel like without in focus, we had more time to get them done. And we were, we weren't that much worried about time. Uh, basketball season has started. Uh, cheer and dance are participating at home games. Uh, cheerleaders are not traveling because of COVID. 
I said there was a public uh, performance of the One Act uh, yeah, Thursday. Uh, Thursday at six in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. uh, students seem to like the auditorium. It's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as the banners, there will be some televisions that will also go up in the in the Commons area, and so we'll look at how we can do those uh, until. We start hanging things on the walls in the new gym. Right now, getting a lift in there, you have to lay out all this plywood. We can't go on the floor. So we do have a flag order and we know we can get in the west door, put down a four piece of the plywood and try to get that flag up in the corner. So we do have a permanent flag for that gym. That's the first thing that we need to probably get up. But mm -hmm. after that, we do have one on the scoreboard right now until we can hang this thing over a break. It's gonna, between COVID and being short staff on the custodians, there's, there's some things that we need to do, but I mean, these guys have worked hard, especially it was at the sale of 4R and trying to get everything put together. So I'm not gonna ever chastise the work that they can do, but just know kind of like when you move into a new house, you don't get everything up immediately. Well, we're kind of in that same mm -hmm. thing right now. And we're somewhat limited where we can get a, get a lift in there right now. With, the labor it will take to put down plywood to get it where we need. So anyway, I think we'll look at getting some input as to what we really want on the walls in that gym, conference banners and so on, where they'll go and how it'll look. But people will just be a little bit patient. So, okay. Any other questions? No, lots of things going on. Yeah. Good report. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, board policy. Let's see here. Early retirement. I'll move to approve extending the early retirement incentive program policy 406.05. Is there a second? I will second it. Okay. Discussion? Normally on policy adoptions, there are two readings. This is not a policy adoption, it's, a, it's an extension. You can have it be two readings if you want, and this could be the first, or you could adopt it. Um, some of the considerations that happened through negotiations <coughs> were that um, because we have limited number of years for new st or for veteran staff coming in or staff with experience, um, the policy is pretty much allowed for this system to pay for itself. So it's, it still is a reward for people who've been in our district. Um, there are basically three requirements. They have to be in the district 10 years, have to have at least, um, they have to be on the step of BA 45 or MA or above, and um, must meet rule 85, which is their age and their experience combined. The policy is pretty much paid for itself. Um, and it is a reward for those teachers with longevity in the district who are eligible for retirement. What it basically does is gives them that difference in paying for their, their health insurance benefits um, for a period of years. In the past, you have given partial. So if somebody qualifies for two out of three, it's two years instead of three. Um, but with the adoption of the new policy, that's something that you're gonna have to consider going down the road is that if somebody meets two of the three or one of the three, are you willing to do that again? Not one for tonight, but with the new policy presented, this is a whole new game. So it could be, we're not gonna do partials anymore or mm -hmm. you guys may if we get some applications, okay? So. Yeah, and that's, again, you know, you talked about that was one of the items that was not necessarily negotiated but was talked about during negotiations and uh, uh, as far as uh, ability to uh, work on, on the actual negotiated agreement, that was one thing that we said needed. If we had uh, commented that if that was something that they wanted to keep, that they would probably need to look at uh, one of the requests that they were making and, and maybe back off. So um, again, I think the discussion went well. It was, I think, well received uh, for the most part. And 
like I said, I think it's a win-win for, for everybody. So I think the uh, negotiation team still did a great job uh, on their requests. And uh, it also rewards our staff that uh, has longevity here. So. So are you good with only one reading since it's not a new policy, just an extension for three more years? Or do you want a second reading on it? I, I'm good. One reading is good. good. I'm fine. Okay, so then your motion stands the way it, way it is. Okay, good. Any other comments? Okay, if not, so. <coughs> yes. Nisha. Yes. Simran. Yes. Robert. Yes. Robert. Yes. All right. Uh, second semester calendar. I'll move to approve the second semester calendar as presented. There a second. I will second. Hey, discussion. As we talked early in the year, the Department of Education understanding the shortage of substitute teachers this year, our inability to be able to do um, larger group um, professional development, they have approved five days of the school year for you to come <coughs> as regular school days in attendance or professional development. <clears throat> okay. And so the state would see that as that's a student content day. The professional development that is scheduled for that, we're working on the schedule. We'll have it to you before the January meeting. If you guys approve this tonight, then we'll look at two days. We already have one day in there for, it's a professional development day, but it's also a strategic planning day for our staff. This will allow us to be able to expand some workshops in there for our staff do it over two days, finish the APL training for new staff, and uh, um, be able to put other workshops in that our staff requested. We did put out a thought exchange asking people for their input on things that they wanted to see if we went to a January workshop. And so we have some input from our staff on, on thought exchange. Um, I think one of the questions that surfaced was, why don't we do this in the summer? Well, when you have new staff, they don't move here, first of all, until August. Trying to schedule APL is about two years out. And unless there's an opening, I mean, I can't get them in the summer. And uh, so we, if we could get them in a, a few days before school in August, but they're booked. And so chances of getting APL in here at those times. So it isn't, whether or not we're trying, it's that uh, we can't, I can't get a booking. And so um, if we could get early days prior to school, just understand that those days are paid days on those staff as well. And so there's probably more money spent prepaying those teachers than if we would pay some substitutes to come in, or if we do it the way that we're doing it right now, because they're not extending any contracts for it. So for this year, I would say it's probably our only bet as to how we can we can finish that training for them, get consistency in classrooms, and we're all using the same language, the same instructional strategies to try to improve instruction. If you ask our staff of all the things that we do, some of the most popular and used professional development is API. Any comments or questions? Okay. Sally, call the roll. Lisa? Yes. Simrad? Yes. Robert? Yes. Robbins? Yes. Lanuza? Yes.
Okay, negotiations. Is there a motion there on? I don't see. Teacher incentive program one? No, no, no. This is a negotiation, just a motion to approve. I would move to approve the negotiated master agreement for the 2021 20, 22 school year as mm -hmm. presented. I'll second the motion. Okay, discussion. Um, what did we meet? Just two Six, times? Three, three times, times. Three times. Yeah. I did uh, attach the minutes from all the meetings yeah. and all the discussions as well as the master agreement. So over, <clears throat> overall, I think uh, negotiations went well. Um, there was no fist fights or you know <laughs> anything like that. So that was good. No, I, I think both sides uh, were able to make good points in, in the discussions. Um, and you know, I thought you said I said earlier, I think it came out as a win-win for, for everybody. The, uh, the the uh, taxpayers of the district for the teachers for the uh, long 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 serving uh, uh, staff uh, etc and so from that regard I think it was a win um, and um, I said overall um, I think uh, I think everybody came away pleased so I hope Chuck any other comments no. Just that uh, I uh, really appreciate the information we received from the superintendent <clears throat> to, so we know where we're at and what we're up against and what we can spend and what we can spend and uh, keeping us uh, intact so we don't go crazy. That's it. Brian, additional comments? Just a good example of how two groups coming together and, and using a little give and take to come to uh, a good workable agreement for both sides. It's a good example of how that's supposed to work. So um, pretty smoothly as far as I'm concerned. No other comments? Sally, go ahead and call the roll. Yes. Robert Jack. Yes. Robert. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Misha. Yes. Yes. Okay. Incentive plan. I will make a motion to approve the 2021 teacher incentive program as presented. There a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, discussion. You guys started the incentive program before I came here. We've expanded some things over the years based on our strategic planning and what staff thought was important. Your first thing that you've been doing for a while is incentivizing teachers to live in the district. And that's where it grew from. The thing that happens with union schedules or union pay is that it treats everybody the same. And over a period of time, um, to incentivize people to step outside their comfort zone and to provide leadership in some of those areas, if you look at the incentive plan that's attached, you'll see those areas that are rewarded for leadership in our district. It isn't big amounts, it's not a salary, but it's a thank you for those people who do it. The only difference in the incentive plan this year is we have some students that we offered remote learning. The parents weren't comfortable with putting them back in session or in person. So they would have had a choice of either sending them or um, enrolling them in homeschool. Well, enrolling them in homeschool, first of all, separates them from us. And there's good homeschools and there's, but at the same time, if we can provide that instruction that if and when those parents feel comfortable with their kids coming back to school, that, that they're staying with our kids. And so in the elementary, there was a remote for reading and math. It's 90 minutes a day. And so the teacher would turn on and do remote learning and provide those materials for the child who's at home. Um, the same thing happened at the, at the middle school, seven and eight, it's all four cores. So science, social studies, math, I think there's two students in one grade, 
and three students in another at the middle school that opted for remote learning. And so they didn't take online, they took the Zoom classes where they would be in the classroom electronically with their peers, okay? And so that was the addition to that plan this year was to reward those people who are willing to use electronics to connect with parents, kids at home. One of the things in the remote uh, request or application was that the parents had to agree to have internet and, and to have their kids log on, okay? That's what we requested. And uh, so I think for the kids who have opted for that. Oops. And so that is the only change to the incentive plan for this year. If you want to look through the incentive plan, there are other things in there. Um, and uh, the one thing that is for sure is that the incentive plan is not a tax support plan. <clears throat> we have to generate money from something in order for, because our taxpayers already pay our people for in their salary. So the incentive plan is a plan that is supported with either grant dollars or funds above what we would normally <laughs> Still comes out of our budget, still paid that way, but um, the money is supported differently. Okay. Any questions with regard to the items that are included in the incentive plan? I think you commented uh, during negotiation, we actually had uh, someone with the bilingual certification. The first one. First one. Had, yeah. yeah the first time we paid that. If no questions, call the roll, Sally. Father Kent? Yes. Robert? Yes. Anuza? Yes. Nisha? Yes. Semi? Yes. Okay. For our property. I would move to approve the sale of the district for our real estate. The property is in part of the northeast quarter of section four, township 17, range four, Colfax County, Nebraska, containing three acres and authorize the president to sign purchase agreement for the sale. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion. I got some updates this afternoon. Chris said he'd be happy to, to have us calling tonight. And if, if you have questions of him on anything, he said he'd be happy to be there. I think he was more concerned about how many people are gonna be in the room and what we're gonna be safe. And I said, well, we'll call you if, if you guys have any questions about the sale. I think that um, the sale of the personal items that are up for silent auction are, they're done tomorrow, right? According to his information. Um, so the sale is 156,000. Uh, Jerry Mundo, uh, Jerry and Rose Mundo are the, the highest bidder on the property. And uh, so I, if you have questions, That's that's pretty much what was in the board packet. Yeah. Um, and all the all the things that were in there stored, or those are all they're relocated. Either removed if they were ours that, that they kept, or they're on the silent auction. Okay. And tomorrow's the last day for that auction. I asked him why why the auction extended beyond because he said the purchaser of the property would have an option to purchase some of the contents then. So if they had the property, so that's what I was told. Okay. Yeah, I guess no sense movement if they want them, right? Yeah. Or can want to buy them, I guess. I had some questions about some Personal things like trophies and the plaque that was on the wall, and but I have not heard back as to what happened with that stuff. So, but so as soon as I know, I will let you guys know. So, 
because I know that they brought a bunch of stuff back to town. And so I don't know where it is. Um, yeah, there was a lot of people going in to look, right? And, yeah, and I've and, got, I have some information that, um, here it is. 13 registered bidders, um, four active bidders, and uh, two from Schuyler, one from Omaha, one from New Mexico. Bid started at 50,000, there were 68 bids. Final bid was 156. And then also in here, attached to this meeting are all of the fees and taxes and so on that have to come out of there. And then also your contract for the purchase of it. We have no tax burden on that, do we? Uh, I think he has the prorated. There was a abstracting title insurance, uh, revenue stamps, FHA, home repairs were nothing, attorney fees, 50 bucks, commission, 3.5, advertising was 2,500. So that's all included in your four packet. Been in the district a long time. Yeah. And I know that still school buildings is always emotional. I mean, to the people who either had history there, it's emotional to the district. And, and I think like in our prior discussions, it was getting harder and harder for us to maintain it. We were using it as a storage unit, but um, pretty high dollar storage unit. It was a good time to get it sold. I'm glad it's done. It, it, uh, we didn't have to give it away by any means and, and uh, without plans for it to be used in any capacity, it's, it was the right call. Any other comments? Sally, call the roll. Albert Chess? Yes. Robert? Yes. Amusa? Yes. Misha? Yes. Samar? Yes. Okay. Priority plan? Um, I think we have a new hire first. Oh. One new hire. And it got in there without it. We got a motion. That's what right. So you're going to have to just think about <laughs> approve new hire recommendations. Uh, or like yeah. I moved to approve the hire of Guadalupe Andrade, uh, Skyler Allen, elementary school high needs prayer educator. I'll second. Any discussion on that? This replacement position. So, it's been kind of a tough year to recruit and to retain people. Yeah, no doubt. But, no doubt. Go ahead and call the roll, Sally. Robert. Yes. Lanuza. Yes. Misha. Yes. Simon. Yes. Robert Jack. Yes. All right, now priority yeah. plan. <laughs> I think Dr. Lefto was on here. There he yep, is. I'm on. I'm right here. All right, so we have uh, 
we had a good month uh, for priority stuff. Um, my write-up has a bunch of, we met four days over the last month, uh, talked a lot about ACT growth, um, spending a lot of time discussing EL um, test scores and those types of things. Our ELPA 21 data seems to be our low point right at the moment. Uh, so that's kind of our focus here for the next month or two. Um, uh, we also are working quite a bit on absenteeism uh, again with COVID and um, this type of situation, it makes it a little bit more challenging with attendance. Um, unfortunately, our stuff isn't as good as it was last year, but we're going to try to keep um, providing some different opportunities for kids to regain some time um, and work with them on getting to school. So hopefully that'll kind of come around. One piece that I did not add on to this one, but I will for the next month is we went through the rating system. So uh, this year we'll, we will rate ourselves three times with our consultants and um, we'll get an an average of one to four, how each part of our um, priority plan is doing. And um, we saw a nice little increase with some of our stuff. So we were pretty happy with that. Uh, a big piece was that we were providing an opportunity uh, for our board to hear us uh, regarding our priority plan. So that was that was a big jump for us. We took control of that this year. Um, and I write these little, little dealies up for us. So um, it's just kind of a nice way to do it. We also have a newsletter that we're sending out monthly and we put it online and uh, my wife and I are working on that with Mr. Grammer and we have people submit different stuff to us. Um, so that's kind of a nice piece, but um, so far everything's going pretty good. We had some really good meetings. Um, by, by no means are we agreeing on everything, but we are definitely um, agreeing to disagree. So it's been, been some good, good meetings. Do you guys have any questions on those? When do they come to visit next? Oh, I think right away in January. Uh, they're back. So we, I think we have one like the second week of January and then the last week of January are the two for, for that month. So they sometimes zoom, don't they? Uh, they'll, they will all be zoom. Yep. They'll be zoom this month, probably for sure. We were going to talk. Uh, we have to call Kathy on the first week of back from school um, just to kind of get an idea how everything is going out here. Uh, but right now we're definitely leaning towards keeping zoom for the next month. So, any other questions? What do you What do you disagree about the most? Oh, well, the fun part is that we have the, the rating system, so we have to go through every step of the priority plan um, for every action, and we have to rate whether we think we're a one, two, three, or four. Um, and we just had some good, lively conversations about uh, what what they saw us as and what we saw us as. And they gave, they gave some of us, um, they gave into us a couple of times and uh, we gave into them a couple of times. We will do that rating again in I think March, it's looking like. So, but I will be sharing that with you guys as a board and with Dr. Hazing. Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions about it, we'll let you know, so, okay. Did anybody else have any questions for him? Don't let him off the hook. Yeah, no kidding. That was, that was way too easy. <laughs> well, if you do, you guys, please stop in and see me anytime. I'd be more than happy to go over the uh, priority plan stuff with you guys. Uh, the rating skills I have as well. So if you want to swing in and see me in my office, just come on in and I'd be more than happy to walk you through it. Sure. I, so I've got one for you. So what? Yep. So all of the areas that we're rating ourselves what is our, our weakest link currently? Uh, right now, our weakest is probably, um, well, probably ELPA data, reviewing data, uh, program review stuff. Um, that's really, to be honest with you, that's about it. Um, the ELPA stuff is what's getting us at the moment. Um, just coming up with a plan. We're going to meet with uh, the EL, the state department EL coordinators and um, just have some conversations that'll be in January, um, kind of like a little review of, of our programs and uh, just have some good conversations. So, but that's probably the lowest is they're really hung up on ELPA data, ELPA scores. That's our, our EL testing, so. I'm gonna add to Joe a little bit or Dr. Leftall. One of the things that Dave Givens, Dr. Givens has been working with us on is how we interpret data, how we use data. And so the system that we're putting in after Christmas is called Schoolzilla. 
Spillzilla takes data that you can look at days in attendance and you can start comparing how many kids are failing, how many kids, so you can use multiple data because now it takes Dr. Leftall's work trying to put data together and he's worked with the service unit people on trying to get that data. They're using a lot of hours to try to get data that, you know, so this system, um, we're looking at rolling it out to our staff in January during our, our training days to let them see that we can put multiple sources of data together to get a better picture about what's influencing what. That's our weak point is trying to gather that data, right, Dr. Leftall? Yeah, this for sure. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough area, data collection stuff. And making sense out of it. So you can take a number out in space, but it doesn't mean anything unless you got some other data that can go along with it or a comparison. And if it's not timely, it's tough to... Yeah, and yeah. it takes too long to generate it. And then there's always the question of, is it accurate? Is it, you know, how, how can you manipulate that data? You know? So it's like, you know. So the Schoolzilla is a program or it's a company or it's a... Yes, yes, yes. But Dave, Dave's here, he can... It's... Um... Schoolzilla is a, is a program that was actually created by a person that was like in my position in some school um, years and years ago and, and just finding ways to like visualize the data, use it, see it, and have it quickly. Um, it was recently bought by Renaissance, which does our, um, our STAR assessments, um, our accelerated reader, Freckle math, it's all a part of the same suite of things that we're having. So it was, it's, it's going to be a part of our Renaissance adoption or Renaissance suite of, uh, of programs, I guess, if you were to say it. And so what we're currently doing right now is working with uh, Infinite Campus and Schoolzilla to start talking to each other. And then that data will be uploaded through Infinite Campus. Um, and so the things that like Dr. Leftall spends hours and hours and hours figuring out what we believe are uh, chronic absenteeism, there will be a, a report, a dashboard piece right there that we can just, it will always be continually updated because it's going to continually read the information from Infinite Campus. Um, you know, so any of that data that we wish to upload to it. So we're, while it's part of our Renaissance, we'll have our star data in it. Um, we will also send the last few years of map data into it and feed that into there and have um, the same sorts of uh, data visualizations, data information based on our map scores and state testing and ACT scores. So, all of that will be in one place where it's going to be easy to find, easy to see, and available to all district staff. And then I'll actually have the ability to download it and post it and print it and do whatever with it. So right, right now we have a dashboard that is that is an ECRA dashboard that through strategic planning, if you go to the board site and this is where if you look at our dashboard. But all that data in there is static. So once they post it, then it uploads, right? Yeah, you know. Whereas this will be live data. And so you can go in and you can do a comparison, a sort. So our teachers will have better information to make better decisions. That's what we're looking at is, you know, because as soon as you upload a piece of data, it's it's out of date because school happens tomorrow. And so the good thing about this is that it's live. You can pull reports, generate reports. And rather than spending a lot of man hours trying to generate a report that's going to be outdated in a day, we can continually pull data and, and put it up there as, as live data. So as soon as an assessment takes place, we'll be able to pull it as soon as it gets in the system. So that's something we've struggled with. All schools struggle with how do we manage the mound of data that we have? Because there's thousands of pages that get thrown at it. So. Is it, so the the data we're looking at is at for for uh, high school. 
It will be only or district wide. So, district -wide. Well, yeah, but we can. Okay. The, the beauty of it is, is that we'll be able to click, a click of a button. We'll be able to say, now let's look at this just nine twelve. And if we want to, we can say, now let's just look at this with our nine twelve EL students, and we can even now okay, what, let's look at our nine twelve female EL students. No, Let's look at the people that have been in the district less than two right. years, more than two years. I mean, you could run a lot of scenarios without a whole lot of man hours trying to generate data that that can be wrong tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, and I think as long as I've been in the business, we've always struggled with how do we get the best data in the hands of teachers to make good decisions on where we're headed? How do we connect school attendance and how do we, it's just, and this system will help us be able to put live data together to make good decisions. One of the things that you can do to raise scores is always make sure that you have an informed teaching staff that they know I did this, what's the result? And uh, we can't always get that right now because it's just too much data. So anyway, Joey, anything else on that? No, I can, I agree a thousand percent. And I'll just give one example for the board. Um, my wife and I and Mark Brady have been working on one report uh, for maps assessment data. Uh, there's just no other way to do it than by hand right now. And with Schoolzilla, hopefully this will help us clean it up a little bit more. But it's 3,000 lines of data per test. Um, that we have to rearrange and and move and so it's just been I mean, we've been working on it about a month right now and like dan said uh we're winter testing right now and that that is going to be out of date as soon as we get the rest of our kids tested so we're kind of in the pinch for that so i'm excited to hear uh schoolzilla is an amazing product so uh, it'll be interesting to see what it can do to help us so that's all i have okay hey, thank you All right. I guess we're on the principal's reports. Um, no, we got a yet. summary data on strategic plan. Yeah. All right. On your table is a summary report. This comes out of 21 pages of strategic planning. And for you board members to have an idea of especially people who haven't been on the board or paid attention to it for that long. This is basically a seven year summary of what were the big ideas when we start looking at, because when we send this out to the public now to put their thoughts in what they would like to see for priorities, this gives them a little bit of information about some of the areas that we've already worked in. And if people will give us input on what they wanna see because um, next week, there will be a thought exchange for board members and all community patrons. And we'll target our community leaders, but they'll be able to go out and put what they think um, should be priorities. The nice thing about thought exchange is that people can go and rate other people's thoughts that, yeah, I think this is a good idea, or no, I don't think it's a good idea. So it's an easy way for us to be able to get input, sort it. And then we'll use the staff input, what the staff looks at and what the community looks at and try to come up with a 2021 plan for trying to get the best data from whoever. You as board members, um, we encourage you to participate, whether you add anything to it or whether you rate it, okay? You have to know everything comes with a price tag because if we do things, that's where we focus, that's what we do, right? And, uh, and so, especially for the school board members who are leaving, to look back at 21 pages of stuff that have happened for you in seven years, looking at what was important. This is a summary of 21 pages, so it's much easier to read, but it is good information for you. It's not all inclusive. The administrators have the rest of this week to add anything that maybe was overlooked for you because then it'll go out to the, to the community, to the patrons, parents. We post it out there for them to go ahead and get on and look at giving us input as to what they would like to see as priorities for 2021. So I do want to congratulate you on all the work that you've done at this point in this plan. And I think it's 
it's really pretty overwhelming. When you look at the individual thing, step by step, what's been done, it's pretty amazing. Will that come out as an email next week for you know a link to get onto? Yeah, it'll, we've not looked at. I got a meeting with our with our strategic planning team. Was scheduled for Wednesday morning, but I think it's going to have to be Friday morning. I've got a state meeting that overlapped me today. Just got it, so I think it's going to be Friday morning, and then um, we'll decide how it goes out. Um, when information will go out with it. We will target some of the of the um, community leaders, obviously, because they're always involved in this. But since we can't get together, we used to go out to Cargill and spend some time, but that doesn't happen. <laughs> and so, trying to reach our parents. The nice thing about this is that it's in multiple languages. So, whatever their phone is set to, they'll be able to read it in the in their language and contribute. And we see it in ours. So bridging that gap of how do we communicate with people who don't speak our language um, or have a difficult time understanding, they may have felt like we didn't have a contribution, but now whatever their phone is set at, they can get it at. So it'll be one question that goes out, asking them for a priority. I'm not sure how we'll word that question yet, um, but it'll be one question asking them to think about what they would like to see in our school for 2021. I think this will help guide their questions. Okay, so this will go out. Um, and this will probably go out in English and Spanish is probably what I'm thinking because those are our two main languages. Mm -hmm. But we'll also put out a parent um, notice on our on our school app and maybe with the with the announcement out to parents. So at least we get that out to the community to say, please go on and contribute. There'll be a place on the website. So if they go there, they'll be able to get on that site and make some contribution or at least weigh in and rate it. You know, yeah, that's a good idea or no. You know? Does that make sense? Well, we definitely want input. That's that's that goes yeah. without saying and, and trying to get, you know, like I said, getting involvement, that's something that we've been trying to, to do and and you know, sometimes we get some good involvement and other times we, you know, you kind of hit a brick wall and you'd say, well, what do I need to do different, you know, type of thing. And, and uh, so I, I know we're out there making efforts to do it. And then this, you know, just one more way and yeah. we we'll appreciate that uh, to make that happen, so. Well, if you look at our demographics, we're less than 10% white population. And so sometimes communicating is more difficult just because of language. And, uh, and I think we're constantly trying to find ways. Our website is totally ADA um, compliant. It is totally language compliant. So whatever their phone is set on, they see our, because every page, we our old system had a lot of PDFs in it, which weren't translatable. They just come up in whatever we put it out. Whereas now we've moved away from that kind of website more to a, compliant website that is not only language barrier, try to remove as many of those, but also um, move away from the ADA compliance. Okay. Our tech staff works hard at trying to find ways to communicate in an effective way. And it's just, you know. The other thing is this, this is a community that doesn't have a, have a community wide paper. We have the Skylar Sun, but it's mostly taken by our, our older population. Most of them don't have kids in school. Um, still an important population to try to try to um, reach and communicate with, but at the same time, so it's kind of a segmented community that way. So it's difficult to, you can't have one mode of communication that works for everybody. I was asking Sally, we sent 7,200 letters last spring and another 2,000 letters this summer. Have you think about, um, there is a newspaper called Mundo Latino, which is pretty popular in the Hispanic population. Uh, it's uh, it's free. It's set in all Mexican stores in Didier's, and it's free for the people. If they so, would contact us, because I don't know who we would contact or how we get- I can give information to sell Perfect. later. Yeah. 
But I think anything that we can do to try to get yeah. communication out is important. So it's very popular. Yeah, it, it, it I, I have no no clue. So, but it, but anyway, I guess I'm just saying you guys have accomplished a lot. And for the two board members that are going off, and we welcome two new ones. It's really at a neat time for them because they'll be able to come on. There'll be a new plan that they'll be able to weigh in on and get some, get some of their thoughts into that for 2021. But it's for the people coming off. Um, you can walk away holding your head that a lot of things happened in this district and you were a big part of it. So. Okay. okay. Now, to your administrative reports, we'll see if there's anybody left out there. Yeah, I was going to say, anybody online here? Um, so we started the front. Mr. Conley, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. You, you want to make a comment? It's something positive, whatever you want to tell them. Yeah, really, I just wanted to highlight Molly Parsons, um, just being the head teacher there at preschool, you know, as everyone knows it's been a tough year and she's really done an outstanding job over there and our communication is excellent together because as you know we can't always be there and and she just does a really good job of running that you know reporting to me when needed and different things like that so um pretty proud of her and uh you guys would be extremely proud of the work she does Okay, Ms. Neeson. Yep, I wanted to highlight um, the work of our kindergarten resource teacher, uh, Blake Newman. Just kind of echoing what Bill just said, like in these times of COVID, I mean, he's really just helped out everywhere in any way he can. Um, even when kids aren't on his caseload, he's always jumping in, helping. He just really is just a staple of that grade. And I'm just thoroughly impressed by how hard he works and how he truly just puts kids' needs before anything else. So I've, I've greatly enjoyed being able to work alongside with, with him. Ms. Bebout, are you on? I think she told me that she had something, but um, I'm just going to highlight that there is a, they're doing a virtual music program out at the rural schools. And so it's in her report that um, Mr. Banahan's here. Uh, I would like to uh, highlight Mr. Baptiste. Uh, he teaches seventh grade history. Uh, he just does a really good job providing a safe environment for uh, kids to come in. Uh, I was observing him the other day and the kids were just volunteering to read out loud, even the ones that were struggling, um, EL students, and for them to have the confidence to read out loud in front of the class, no matter if it was a sentence or a, a paragraph, um, they just had that confidence and that trust in him knowing that his classroom was a safe environment. For them to do that, and that stems back to him building those relationships with those kids. So uh, I thought that was really important to highlight. You're also doing a virtual Christmas concert? We are. We are doing a Christmas concert. Um, I believe they're recording it on Thursday. We're putting out the link on Friday, right? Yeah. Um, recording it Thursday um, during the school day. And since we cannot, they're striving an actual event. We're going to use Strive to um, put it out at the middle school. And since Strive is busy that evening, it'll take a few hours to upload. Um, so they're going to upload it in the morning on Friday. It'll be up by Friday afternoon. What well, I'm Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> we know who to blame. I mean. Mr. Gravito, do you have anything else you want to say? Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to highlight, I, I, I couldn't pick one, so I picked both of our uh, our newcomer teacher, Ms. Racinos, and our EL teacher, Ms. Wen Hong. Um, so I've done observations on them here in the past month, and really impressed with, I mean, they have to do a lesson plan for all core subjects and at all three grade levels and um, work with students who 
oftentimes I've interrupted, uh, interrupted schooling and something that you know, most, most teachers don't necessarily, it, it'd be hard to truly grasp it and I truly couldn't grasp it until I were in their classrooms. And even then just completely impressed by the work they do. They spend a lot of time above and beyond the school day just getting that done. And not only are they creating these lessons, they're good, engaging lessons, and the kids enjoy being in that classroom. Um, Mr. Vanahan mentioned relationship builders. They're both really good at building relationships with those kids. And they need that, especially a nice, safe place for those kids to be you know, good at when they first come to this country. So I'd like to highlight those two. And I was also highlighting the uh, our, our Christmas concert coming up here. I'm pretty excited about we finished map testing, so we're talking about data. We're going to have fun diving into that data when we get back to break. So, what I got. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Grammar, Mr. Kosick is supervising the ball game. Do you want to kind of hit his a little bit and then yours? Yeah, sure. Uh, from Mr. Kosick's side, he has a Venus and Fletcher Ramon does great work with him, handling a lot of the changes of games and changes of different things they have to make on the spot so also we'd like to recognize jose new custodian at the high school I and mean, he's made an impact already works hard ask whatever you ask him he gets done great person mine was i'd like to recognize our teammates program mentor program started by tom osborne uh, Alejandro Dimas runs that program, organizes the program. Uh, it's done great. We started with the middle school when I was at the principal up there, having five kids, and we now have 41. So it's a great growth at that point. I also like to recognize our new auditorium. I can't say enough about that. Phenomenal building, phenomenal place. Um, we had a great program the other day. Um, vocal and band has great sound and it's just a pleasant atmosphere to have an event. So I just like to highlight those. Any questions for any of that? No. Directors. Ms. Neeson already talked. Um, Heather Bebop received a $50,000 grant from Beyond School Bells for the after school program. Normally we get about $5,000 and this summer when we were meeting with them, the, the person said, uh, based on where we're at, we have, this, we have some money that we'd like to give you above that for, your after, for the after school program. And we were expecting $5,000. And he said, well, I'd like to give 50,000 to Skylar for their after school program which really helped us a ton. Um, yeah. as, so in addition to our to our 21st century money, we got a grant or got a gift of $50,000 to boost that program. Uh, Mr. Banahan already talked about his, unless he wants to say anything about athletics, what you have coming up or activities? Uh, we got our last two events coming up. We have a uh, wrestling. Uh, Quad up in Northport tomorrow night. It'll be live stream. Uh, they don't have any room for spectators, so the link has been shared on our live feed. And then we have our last home basketball game, uh, which will be played at the middle school tomorrow for the girls because there's varsity events going on. So it'll be good for the girls. They're really excited about getting to play their last, especially the eighth grade girls, getting to play their last game in the middle school gym. Uh, and then I just we had a couple wrestlers. Um, that have gone, the two girls, um, yeah, Sanayi Sanchez, um, she actually improved her record over the weekend to 11 and 0. She went undefeated uh, in a tournament this weekend. Uh, her and Lauren Wimhoff, they both have 11 wins. <laughs> and loss. Like Chris Shannon is up to 16 wins with one loss. So they all three improved their records over the weekend in a tournament up in Albion. Our wrestling program has been doing really well this year. So, and our girls basketball team has gone um, really come really far under Coach Hayes. He does a great job working with the kids. So, those are the two things. 
like to recognize there. Okay, Dr. Lepel. Mr. Kasich, talk a little bit. Um, just a, we got an update today from the from the NSAA on activities, and uh, while the governor has moved to 50% in large venues, um, we're currently under 25% limit, and then within that, then our DHM also had a restriction on groups and families and so on attending. And so we, we put a few more precautions in. Number one, we take everybody's temperature coming in. We also make anybody sign in or any student who is there has to check in. So we know exactly who is at what contest. And uh, with the size of our, of our gym, um, just having them the one side out, we can have a thousand people in there. So 250 for a quarter of the numbers. And uh, we've not gotten over 160 some people, I think was that was the most that we've had. But when we use both gyms, um, then we take a thousand out of the other gym because we use both sides. But um, the one thing that we are going to do, we are not going to go to 50% yet. We're going to continue to monitor who comes in by having them sign in just in case we have a spread of any kind. We, we think it's the best way to keep our kids safe. Um, we're going to stay at the 25% until after Christmas break, and then we'll see where we're at with this. The one other change that we're going to make is we weren't pulling out the south side bleachers, but while we tried to separate our visiting people from our people, there were some people who knew people in our town, and so they sat by them, and we're just going to say visitors on one side, home on the other, try to keep our people just a little more safe. Um, there is no requirement that we have to, but I just think if we could give a real um, visual sign that we are going above and beyond what is expected of us so, yeah. so i think that's a good i think that's a good idea yeah so you know just like this room you know we try to spread out and do it do the best yeah. we can but yeah. when it comes to activities trying to keep people apart just like yesterday at the at the concert people sat apart and they sat in family groups no more than six in a group mm -hmm. so we, we observed a lot of the right things to do. People still had to sign in yesterday. Everybody wears masks. Were they all comfortable? <laughs> I think I, so. I hope so. I hope so too. So anyway, I mean, but I know that our ADs have worked hard to try to make sure that if we have people, visitors in our building, that we do whatever it takes to keep everybody safe. Dr. Leftall, you still on? Yeah. Um, so I, I was going to highlight the one act performers. Uh, they did a super, super job uh, down at districts. And we were in, I would say, the toughest district in the state of Nebraska. Um, I think two of our peop two of the teams we competed against uh, finished one and two. So I think we did okay. Um, they put on a really nice performance in the position that they were put in. And I was really proud of them. If you get a chance, uh, uh, I know they're going to have that performance on Thursday. So come up and support them. Um, I would also like to say um, thank you to the board. And we were talking about this today at our meeting. Um, for those that didn't know, I was a superintendent prior to this and you guys really have done just an exceptional job with strategic planning. And um, the schools that I've been in before, we, we put in strategic planning reports, but it's really um, easy to circumvent that and kind of go around the outside and, and put your own little pieces in place. Um, you guys have done a really nice job of just working through that process and knowing the direction you're going and doing the right things and staying on board with it. So um, I've only been here three years, but I sure feel like you guys are just right on track. So I appreciate the work you guys have done and especially those going off the board right now. So that's all I got. Ms. Um, I just would like to highlight Jennifer Novak. It's always hard coming in as a first year teacher, but she has done a phenomenal job of trying to fit right in, working. She has some tough kids, but she's just working her heart out. And Emily and Jennifer have an incredible room as far as relationships that they have built. And I wanna take this time to thank all the 
board members who are going off and wish everybody a Merry Christmas and the best of new years to come. Last but not least. Mr. Gibbons. Okay. So, Dr. Gibbons, um, sorry. You know, I highlighted one of our Renaissance products, one of our Renaissance suites. Um, that my on my on is an online library where you can log in and read a book online. Uh, it's a K8 product for us. We use this K8. Um, as of last Wednesday, when I submitted my report, we had just that 6,959 books that the students had finished reading between since the beginning of the school year till now. And then that's just strictly in my own. This is not any books that they've had from the classroom or any books that they get from the library. So these, these are books that they've just read online and they can do this anywhere in the world. They just need to log in. Um, I just went in and looked just for fun. The number of books completed at this point now is 7,420. So what happens is there, the kids go through and they read a book. Um, now, granted, these aren't necessarily all, you know, War and Peace, you know, 700 page novels, but they're, you know, they are a full complete book. And then students actually take a uh, comprehension quiz over them to see that they understood that. But so, you know, the, the amount that our kids are reading right now, K-8 is absolutely extraordinary and <clears throat> wonderful for our, for our students. That's a great, uh... Great little program then. That's, yeah. I mean, understandably, again, even regardless of what level you're reading at, just the fact that they're reading and reading more should help from a uh, understanding and, and interpretation of questions when it comes to testing and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Practice will make practice reading will make a person better at reading, even if it's a little bit below their level. You know, then the thing that we can do at this point is have teachers. Um, monitor this one to see what they're doing and then as students are reading below their level then they're saying okay you enjoyed that book on world war ii awesome you know and i'm you know and so you read you enjoy that book on world war ii try this one look at this one on world war ii also and find that it's it's a book that's more at that child's level and because now you've got the kid interested you've got a book and they're wanting to read so it's it's good for us. You know, the nice thing about this is that all the books are in the you know Lexile range, meaning that they're all at a reading level or grade level, and so that's where the teacher can challenge a kid to read a little bit tougher book, you know, mm -hmm. or a little, and just keep improving their reading. The big thing is, you know, they're reading and they're comprehending, and they're, it's so it's good. How long have we had access to that? Um. About a year at this point is uh, we did it last summer as kind of a pilot during summer school and saw our kids just you know a few hundred kids in summer school reading a couple thousand books over the course of summer school. So it's like, well, okay, let's let's implement this, but just based on our rollout and as we started things with with. Uh, my, we were able to get it started, or with right with the Renaissance Company, we were able to get this started about the first part of November of last year. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to highlight a couple of things. Um, food service director Jamie has done an outstanding job of rolling with this food service program. We have all of our students this year qualify for free and, or for free lunch and breakfast. Um, she's taken a new kitchen at the high school. They've expanded from two options to a third line now. And so they're learning how to operate and run that kitchen. But anything that we ask her to do, she's just done an outstanding job. Um, managing the program. The dollars in the program are really strong right now. And uh, uh, this is the first food service program that I've ever been associated with that you don't have to support from the general fund. 
and generally in a high free and reduced lunch population, the reimbursements do not cover your meal costs, but here they, they make it work. And if you notice that every year our lunch balances are higher at the end than they are at the start or with the food program this year, same thing. We've also added a fruits and vegetables program that is free to our kids. We did this starting a year ago. And uh, they had first put this into the lunch program and it kind of flopped because parents kind of fought the, the fruit and vegetables that, you know, there wasn't as much fried food and there wasn't as much, but when they put it in the after school or in the afternoon program, kids eat fruits and vegetables. And so we're getting kids to eat healthier, but um, not necessarily by forcing kids to eat it at the lunchtime. So. For some of our kids who are in the after school program or go to athletics in middle school, that's enough of a snack in the afternoon to tide them over a little bit till they get home. I'm sure they're hungry when they get home at five or six or you know, whenever they get there, but at least the food service program is that she's done an outstanding job. Mm -hmm. Also want to thank Virginia and Mark Minor for their roles on the board, been great mentors. Um, supporters, but I think really leaders in um, taking the district and moving it. It's easy to take a status quo district. It's tough to take a district that you're always looking at how do we get better, how do we change. And that's a tough leadership role. And so um, thank you for your past work. And Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. You know, you've been on Eight now, eight years. Twelve. Twelve years. Yeah. Time flies when you're that's having a, fun, that's right? A sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just occurred to me today that I I started when Dominic was a kindergartner, and oh. he's a senior this year. So. And uh, again, <laughs> I, I, and again, as as uh, Dan had alluded to, a lot of things progressing through the district over that period of time. So you have definitely have had a hand in that, and uh, so again, appreciate your time served and and uh, wish you good times afterwards. And you can still run again, right? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> quick question for you as she goes off, because she was on up till this time, is something you can think about if she would be a person who could give her final son her his diploma since she was on for half of his year. Not necessarily, I mean. I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. So that's, that's that'll be family is family is family, you know, and that's, <laughs> so, I think that's, uh, I think that's fitting. I don't have a problem with it. Here. Okay. Thank you, you don't have to go by my opinion. I mean, but I, I don't think <laughs> you're, I, you're the president. I don't have a problem with it. Thank you, Virginia, for all the time you spent here and all the hours and extra things you've done for the district and uh, help moving the district forward in a positive way. And um, there is that opportunity to run again. <laughs> Not, probably, probably too far down the road. A four year break would be fun. Or even two, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but thank you again. Well, you guys have been a great group to collaborate with and to learn from and to get to know and and it's uh it's been uh, it's been a pleasure to be here actually so even even though it hasn't always necessarily been um easy we've we've had some major challenges but uh, there's been a lot that's been accomplished and i i'm really excited to have been a part of it so i should say the last thing before we go is i did give you a COVID report Yes. We do this every day. It tells you how many students. So we have five <clears throat> positive students today out of over 2,000. Um, we have no uh, paraeducators out, and we have one teacher pending a test. No, she still has some symptoms, and so um, she's been doctoring with that. But I think it's really pretty tremendous. When we came back in September, I was wondering how long we were going to be here. And I got to thank the school nurses over and over and over because they, they run a pretty good tight ship with um, making the decisions about who's in the district, who needs to be quarantined, and 
that is a that, that's a tough job and uh, so thank them for their work but these are the numbers today that are in, in the district the nurses and the teachers as well that have kept their kids going right because those kids that have been on quarantine if, even if they haven't been positive they've you know they've had to be accountable for getting their work done so and I know that was definitely a thing that we dealt with uh, with Dominic. He, he's been out for probably about four weeks and he's doing just fine with his classes. And so just making sure that he's keeping up and that's and that's all the teachers have, have been helping him to do that. So for those of you who don't know, but I think everybody does. Brian did a great job with the foundation of putting together a thank you video for the teachers. Um, that's great work. I know our staff appreciated a lot, meant a lot to people, and uh, so you kind of spearheaded that on your own. With your, you had several people who worked with you, but um, but it was your leadership there to pick it up. So thanks. Well, I would like to comment on that. It was we did have the the whole foundation support, and and my positive would be to uh, highlight Jose Rocha, who I got to work with on that video, and where. Uh, one of the great benefits of working on this board or the, the foundation board is you, you get put in a position with working with people that you would not normally ever get else for whatever reason get to work with. And you know, Jose is a, a 2020 graduate and um, very talented young man with an entrepreneurial spirit where he's in addition to working his regular job and loves right now, he's you know decorating Christmas trees and doing photography and video, preparing himself for college. But um, when I've been around Jose uh, on a number of events, whether it's uh, a school dance or with this video, he's just got an attitude of putting effort in to make things better for other people. So instead of uh, enjoying his time, you know, at a dance, he's helping decorate or helping video and just making it better for other people. So it's a testament to him and you know, being a product of our school. I'm, I'm proud of him too, just for having that, really that uh, entrepreneurial spirit and in, in wanting to help others. So I really want to lift him up for uh, the quality work that he did with the video and, and he's shown on a, a number of occasions here at the school. Ryan, do you want to comment on the foundation? Uh, foundation met uh, a week ago. Yeah, our primary, uh, a lot of the discussion was, was uh, we will be hosting the, the open house for the Performing Arts Auditorium. So it'll be similar, uh, I think similar schedule to what, what was done with the uh, West Gym. So uh, would like to see uh, a lot of people uh, attend and, and we'll have a number of speakers and, and the foundation is going to get the opportunity to host that. So that'll be Wednesday. Uh, the 4.30 will be the time that the open house will begin. And I think the presentation or that ribbon cutting will be about 5.30. That's all I have. All right. <clears throat> And superintendent email. A second on share. Okay. Every year we do this and we do it in a public setting. I, I think everybody has one. If not, I brought copies too because yeah, unfortunately I, I was I ill prepared to uh, get it out any faster than I did. Just too many things going on and had a few things uh, just trying to get them tied together. But um, again, uh, you know, feel free to comment on, in, on anything you'd like to comment. I, I tried to put everybody's things together uh, in an orderly fashion. Um, you know, my comments, uh, you know, I, uh, I think Dan has done a great job this year. I mean, we've got, uh, crazy things going on with COVID. Uh, we've got, you know, finishing up last year because of the way things finished up and, you know, trying to balance, how do we, how do we get kids caught up and how do we move them forward? And, and a lot of things that way. And on top of that, we got the building projects, 
that were going on and trying to tie those things in and make it all fit. Um, and, you know, the priority stuff, we got that going on. So there's just a billion things going on. And I know, uh, you know, he tries to, to do a lot of things, you know, Spear had a lot of things and, you know, and he has a great team too. Um, my request is that he utilize that team to, you know, draw from their strengths a little bit more maybe than, and then maybe I see it, maybe you do. And I just am missing some of that. Um, but I think, uh, I mean, overall, we, you know, have a good, good system going and uh, we just need to continue to build on the positive things. And uh, um, I said, so that's just some comments. I may think of something later, but if you guys have comments you'd like to share with him, please, please don't hesitate. I, I guess I got one other thing too. And I think Dan, you and I talked maybe a little bit last year when we did review and I says, you know, maybe one of the things you know, we're, we're really not designed to have conversation with, you know, the principals, you know, that's kind of off limits or, you know, and we hear things, of course, through staff, et cetera, to cut just general conversations. But I think we visited a little bit about a 360 eval. And I don't know if you're, you know, if we need to do anything like that, or if you're interested in, in participating, you know, having something like that go on. I mean, just to get additional feedback too, so. And we can talk about that later too. Other comments? I guess I'll just comment. My comments are pretty real similar to what they've been for the last several years where a lot of times met or not met. I wish there was more than two options, where, but then Joey talks about one, two, three, and four uh, or Dr. Leftel on, on priority. It still can be difficult to even when there's only four options, it's it's difficult, but because uh, and I did put not met on on one area, and that that seems a little bit harsh, but it's but it's uh, you know you got two options, I guess, and um, you know as, as a board we we oversee one one employee, and it's our responsibility to you know evaluate and hold that employee accountable, and and so that's where I guess. Uh, I hope my comments didn't seem overly uh, critical on a couple of the areas because in, you know, in general, um, yeah, it's been a, been a challenging year in a lot of different ways. And, and I guess I, I think we're not just surviving. I think we're, we're thriving in spite of the challenges and, and, you know, a lot of that's due to Dr. Hazing's uh, leadership and, and, I think Dr. Hazing likes to deflect a lot of the praise on the strategic planning, you know, to administrators or to the board, but uh, a lot of that would not have been uh, possible without his leadership. So, um, but with all that said, you know, there's still room for improvement and we can't rest on our past accomplishments. We need to keep moving forward. And I had some comments on that and that's, that's, uh, those are my thoughts. Well, anybody else want to jump in? Go ahead. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you. You know, you know, it's it's not been a real, uh, it's been a really difficult year, and uh, and you were not only on top of the best for the district, but also for the finances and refi refinancing the bonds and all the better for the school. So it's been a really tough year with construction, with COVID, with short stuff, with, and you help, you have been really successful in reporting to us um, on that part. Uh, I guess just, you know, like Brian said, and one, one thing that I would like to see more, one of my, my comments there was that I would like to see more report on COVID stuff um but other than that i think you have been meeting all the expectations that we have from you so that's that's it for me and thank you so much for all you have done in this really tough year um i hear from from someone that this year the worst jobs is being the director of a um 
health district and being a superintendent. <laughs> so you had one of those tough jobs and you did it great. So thank you very much. Well, I'd like to thank Mr. Hazing for Dr. Hazing for uh, putting up with us as a board. I think uh, we try to work as best we can with him. Uh, and the valuation sheet is a uh, Matt or didn't me. Um, that that's too hard. There's there's always there's always some place where there's a possibility for some things to be done that uh, you don't have that in here. But I feel he's done a very well, very good job, very well performed his duties, and uh, I don't know where I'd be without him. And uh, it is his job. It's our job to hire somebody at the district to do the job. And I think we, we did a great job on that, thanks to some of our past board members also. And um, I don't think we should be nitpicking or not nitpicking, but uh, uh, micromanaging because we've hired a person to do the job and I think he's doing a great job and uh, continue the good work. I would like to thank Dr. Hazing as well for, um, for everything that he does. I don't think that um, he looks at this um, as a job. I think he looks at it as a, as a, like a vocation or a calling in life to, to do um, to do things that are going to benefit our, our kids. And, um, and, and I, I, I highly commend that kind of an attitude because I think that if you go into a, a position with that kind of an attitude, no matter what it is, um, you'll, you'll be successful because it's not all about just you. It's about what you can do for others. And I find that um, in my experience that that's, uh, that's a mantra for him. He wants to do for others. It's very commendable. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I do have a uh, piece of correspondence here that I also received uh, the other day. It's from Jack Moles at uh, NERCSA. And uh, I'll share that with the, every, pass it around here, but basically it's a thank you for Dan's involvement with uh, two very large projects this last summer. And again, uh, his uh, leadership was greatly appreciated in that matter. And uh, so I will share that with the team and just pass that around. As you're passing that, I'm going to just make a couple of things. I think, first of all, the evaluations are great. I put a lot of stock into what our staff wants, what our parents want. And I look at that as my challenge. Can we put together a plan that addresses as many of those things as we can? Then you give me a great administrative team. We know we have good teachers, good coaches, people working from their professions to try to do the right things. I heard a comment this weekend that I think really should ground us all. And that is be careful that you're not building your ego so high that when you fall off, you commit suicide. Meaning, look at humility, be humble, accept criticism become vulnerable. And I think through the strategic planning process, if you go in and see how our staff has responded to some things, there are some things that keep you humble. But they're honest, it's a frustrating time for many of them. They can't see their families and they can do things. And we, we sit through that and try to find that silver lining of what are they really after? I think that's all of our challenge. 
more so than evaluation, even though I appreciate an evaluation. I do think that we need to pay attention to what the district patrons want, what our parents want for their children in the school, and what our staff is asking for and what they're capable of doing. It's a fine line between pushing and shouting or leading. And I find that I've got an administrative team that will lead more than push. And that's a compliment to them. <coughs> so keeping some stability and staffing and those things, how do we recruit? How do we find those things? How do we make sure that we put together a plan? That's really a stronger evaluation for me than, than an accolade or, a, you know, it's a pretty static thing today. Because, and I think that's being in the business 40 some years. I started at 12. <laughs> but I think those are, those are things that all of us could model. We can take away. And as board members, you get blamed for things that aren't your fault. And you get praised for things that maybe other people um, did, had a big role in. I mean, much the same thing. I get praised for things that the rest of the room did. So I appreciate this. I love the job. Um, I think it's an unbelievable community. And how we move us forward is going to be pretty key. So if an evaluation stems to make you better, that's what I'm after. Okay. So like I said, it's, uh, it's been a damn interesting year. I'll just say that, you know, and, and again, many, many challenges and, and hopefully we're nearing the end of what may be some of the worst of it and uh, moving on to better things. But uh, again, only time will tell on that and we'll have to just kind of go as we go and and do what we can so we do appreciate your efforts i have no other items to bring i would entertain a motion for adjournment i move to adjourn the meeting is there a second i'll second it's been moved and second all those in favor of adjourning the meeting signify by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed nay Motion carries.